So I've got my legs ready, I've got the mortises cut, now I have to cut my cross rails. I've got to cut them to length and plane them. Better to cut them to length first and then if there is any distortion it will usually be less if you cut them to length first. And um, this is the, all I need on this is two, two marks here. One will get me square across this way here. So I'm going to cut this first. Work down the long face. And that was going so well I didn't want to stop. So here we go. I'm going across this face now. And I'm going to surface plane this one and get this one ready. I'm going to mark this one off that length. That's my next rail. Set this one aside. That one looks like it was an old joist, which I believe it was. A little shaking around now with the uh, trestles, but I'm going to do exactly what I did before with my bench top. This side's pretty good, but I don't want any twist in it. So as always, I have to make sure there's no twist in the rail because that will result in a twist in the frame probably. One surface down, my winding sticks, centered on the board, and I'm good, I'm happy. No twist in this one, that's very nice. Pencil mark, so this is my face mark, got this edge to make sure, I have to make sure this is straight and square. So it's straight and it's out of square by about half a mil, something like that. A couple of things here, you can clamp it to the bench top or you can do as I'm going to do is just plane this against the screw. But safety is your, is the issue. So slightly overhanging my plane. Not much to do to this one to get it right. I'm hoping that's probably close. And that's square. So I'm square now all the way along. Then my mark goes on here. Now I think I said this before, but just in case I didn't, you can set a marking gauge uh, to the thickness you want. In this case, it's one and a half and I'm just over one and a half, so you can set this just to make sure you're parallel slightly under down there. Yeah. So I've got a rough face on this face. So I'm running my gauge line here and it does show a taper from one end to the other. So I have to take this down. We're going to be registering the square and the gauge against the two registration faces, face mark and face edge, so I don't have to worry too much about this being perfect, this parallel, because I'll be working. But I do have to be concerned when it comes to forming the tenon, so I get this as close as possible. As close as possible. I'm going to flip it round so I've got the thick end at this end. My back leg is going on the trestle. That was a hard knot there. 
very typical of this type of wood. Another hard nut there. Super hard these nuts, but just keep going. This is a workbench. I still see a hairline left on there, but I am so close. And that's going to be close enough for me. I'm just checking here for flatness. Super hard stuff. Check for flatness again. This is all you want, just because you've got your gauge line, you've got your gauge line. You check in in the middle just for any belly, just because we're going to be registering a router against that to make sure the surface of the tenons are parallel to this surface. You'll understand when we do it. So I've got one edge to do. So I'm just gonna check it for parallel now. Check it for six inches. I need six, a little bit wider at this end. Two or three shavings should do it. Check it for square, square, square. Now we're ready to do the other three. Once you've got your rails together, I usually gang them up like this and then clamp them together because it guarantees the exact lines of the shoulder line where I want them to be. Square one end up. Near enough, you don't have to be over fussy because actually we're gonna cut two of these down and we're actually going to be rounding over the ends of protruding tenons as well. So. Just close enough, we'll be fine. So I'm gonna measure in three and a quarter. I'm gonna go straight to my knife because I just need knife walls all the way around each of these tenon ends here. So I'm coming in three and a quarter from the end of there, three and a quarter from the end of here. And you will see now, I hope, that by squaring these lines across, the exact lineage, the, the line from top to bottom will be perfect as long as I'm good with this line going across here. So here, I'm gonna squeeze as much as I can. I'm going with the first pass, it's going to be very light, like this. And onto this one here, I do the same. A little bit awkward because it's such a wide expanse. Light pass with the first one, and then a heavy pass, as heavy as you like after that. That's our knife wall ready to go. Get rid of three of these for now. And I'm gonna focus just on one rail. Put these out of the way. Using that reference edge for the shoulder line. So here I'm gonna bring my knife wall across here. Up onto this edge using the registration faces every time. This goes in here. And as long as my square is square and I'm using the right registration faces, these points will come out exactly on the shoulder, just like that. So this line is registered with this line, perfect. Do the same on this one. Here. And then I'll run my gauge line for my tenons. So 
So your tenon's going to go, you're going to register against this face mark with your marking gauge, your mortise gauge. I'm going to use the same setting that I used before, the three quarter inch, but I'm going to center this in here by eyeballing this first, as close as I can get it, putting two pin marks in here and then checking here. And I've got a slight discrepancy, it's quite a big discrepancy. So now all I do is equidistance that in between those and I keep inching towards this. So there it is, I think. Uh, if I go here, there I've got the two lines and if I turn it around here, now I'm still off just slightly. That has to be dead centered. We've got to work on this till we're centered. I'm gonna run a couple of lines this time. There I am, I'm centered now, I'm happy with that. Register against the right face here. Run the gauge line, run it onto the end here. Just like this. And then onto the other face here. And I'm ready to cut these tenons then. Just so you can see them. One, there it is. That's my, my tenons marked and I'm ready, oops, to cut these. And that's it, they're ready to cut. We're ready to start uh, cutting the tenons. I'm working on a collapsible workstation here. It works for this and um, I've got my other tools rearranged here. Work it as best you can, work it as safely as you can. Your safety is important. The methods I'm using are very standard for our hand joinery. So I'm chiseling into my knife wall from the end here. Just for the step down, I'm gonna do the same on this one. And I would normally do these in pairs. But I'm gonna finish one tenon all the way through. I'm gonna cross cut with my tenon saw. I go right in here. On down to that 3 8 line. A little awkward, but you have to fight it. Try not to go past your line, that's the important thing, because if you do, you're cutting a thinner tenon than you need. Flip over, I'm gonna focus on just this one tenon now here. Flick that out of the way. There we go. I'm gonna show you this method. I'm gonna just use a handsaw now to cut down the cheeks. Probably not the most common way, but it does work on the larger joinery. It probably is quite common. So I'm gonna wedge this in between, get it nice and tight. And uh, my hand saw. So I'm gonna cut my tenon wide. I'm gonna leave it a good millimeter oversize on each side of the line. I'm not even going to try to get close to the line.
Once you've gone across the top, so I'm a good mill from a line there, I'm going to start dropping my hand with each cut. So I'm coming from this corner down to this corner. Once I've reached the corner, I'm just going to stop. There, I'm going to go on the next one. Again, I'm leaving it a millimeter fat. Don't worry about this movement, it's not bothering me, it's probably bothering you more than me. Drop your hand now again. Show you where I am now. So you can see quite a bit I've left on because it doesn't matter because we're going to be pair down, we're going to be pairing down, but we're going to use the router. I'm flipping around now to cut from this face again at the angle. Corner to corner, and now square across, and it'll just glide in that cut. Listen to the sound. There it is. Same on this one. So these go really quite quickly. It's surprising how inventive you become when you're doing this, and I'm sure you will develop your own method for locking it into the jaws here. There it is, so that's the two done. Put that away. Let's take a look at this tenon now. There's a tenon. We can't take this down any further yet because we, now we have to make sure the mortise hole is to the final size because you always fit the tenon to the mortise, never the mortise to the tenon. My next stage is to use the gauge line. The inside of the mortise hole is fuzzy. It's got surface fibers on there from chopping. So I'm gonna take my chisel in this case I'm right in the gauge line here and I'm just going to pare down part way through about halfway through and I'm going to pare down this face just like this just to clean up the fuzzy area inside the mortise hole and if you want to if you want dead on assurance, assurance you can clamp a block clamp a block on there square to the edge, along that edge, just to clean up that face. Don't go all the way through, just go halfway through. Same on the opposite face. This is just paring down the, the face, just to smooth up the inside to help the passage of the tenon into the mortise hole. But I'm not there. Or something. Go down, as I say, about halfway. And keep it as parallel as you feel you can get it to the outside face. Flip over. Use the same gauge lines from this side. Like 
like this. That's it really, we're just going to knock out the, the remaining fibres inside there. And this is the time when you start to see where we made the tenon fat by that one mil on each side and we have to take that down. So we're going to fit that to the mortise hole like this. I'm going to put this back into the clamp here and I'm going to switch tools to a router, but not the kind of router you might think, but the hand router, the hand the router plane. This is my router plane. Now I've got this overset, I think. Oh no, it's just under set. So I set this, take it down, and I keep this registered here. Watch this now. So I'm going to take down this inside face like this, as wide as I can, but obviously when I get out here, it starts to drop because I don't have enough, maybe don't have enough pressure. So I have to be careful. So I'm taking off a little bit more. Press down on here. So this is keeping me parallel to the outside face. So I'm pressing down with my hand, down with my hand like this. Keep it pressed, keep it pressed. When you get to this outside section here, you may want to go just with your smoothing plane, like this. Then use your gauge lines to follow. So just take your plane now, because this is down, this outside rim of the plane is free to get down to your gauge line. This is very smooth. Now, there's my line on this side. I'm slightly out of parallel. So I'm going to go back into here and take down this far side here, this side down. Like that. Let's take a look. So now I'm right on my line, dead on. And now I can check it with the actual mortise hole, so I still have that other mill from the other side to take down yet. Is it the same setting? I don't know. I'm going to bring it back up till it's just kissing the surface like this. Take it down incrementally with a half turn. Keep it hard pressed down. Switch planes. Take a look again. See how we are doing. We're getting close. Getting close. Not quite there. And now. Just look, can you see, I've got, I can see on here, I've still got half a mil of line to take down, half a mil of line this side to take down. So at this stage, it wouldn't really matter which side you take it off, but I'm going down here. You have to keep trying in and out, in and out it starts to feed into that mortise hole. More yet. You want it tight, but not overly tight.
that yet. That one's going. That is close, very, very close. You can see that, but I don't want it over tight because if it's too tight, it'll split this top section in here. So I'm going to go down a bit more. Like that. A little extra on here. get the size because that was going so closely in there now I believe that's a good fit so what I'm going to do is get the size of this so I'm going to put this in here at the bottom so it's flush in the bottom of the hole it's flush at the top here but I just want to explain something here because all the tenons we cut are the same as this one at this stage because this one now fits into this hole here, oops, that fits into that one. So the others are gonna be cut the same way, but to do this one, we have to cut a step out here to compensate for the recess that it's going to go in or the mortise it's going to go in. So I'm gonna mark this directly from the hole here, spin it around. You can use the square if you want to on the end, but I'm just using my finger and I'm cutting this off. So this comes out here that's my next step. I'm going to cut this and fit this into the hole. A bit big this saw, but I think it'll work. Just stop shy of the shoulder. This cut here I'm going to cut slightly away from the shoulder. So I'm starting right on my cut line, cutting away out a square just a little bit, like that. And I'm gonna take a chisel down here to pair cut the surface fibers flush, like that. May as well, while I've got it here. Got this in here. I am going to put a slight bevel around the edge just to ease this into the mortise hole here. The same on this edge here, the corner. Just eases it into the hole. And now there's one last thing. This has a fuzzy edge on here on this surface of the shoulder. I take my chisel right on to this edge here. Just pear cut. Let me do it on top of the workmate so you can see. This will just guarantee the shoulders are registered properly. Same on the other side. to try this in the mortise hole. Let's 
see how we did. Pretty close. You have to feel this now. You have to decide whether you want to take another shaving off. I'm going to go in the middle here and see how I feel. Because it, this section here, there's not much meat left on here and this could split here and I don't want that to happen. So maybe the best thing is to slide this in between in here just to keep a little pressure on there, like this, and stop it from parting, just to give you a little bit of extra resistance, but this is working fine, it seems to be nice. The only question I've got is, so is it the thickness of the tenon this way, or is it the width of the tenon this way? So we pull it out, we take a look inside, at the tenon and if need be we can take a shaving off the bottom here or we can take a shaving off the thickness of the tenon. It's very shiny in here so I might be tempted to take just a shaving off this surface just to make sure. Like that. Just take out that shine and try again. What about the width? The width looks as though it's just fine. I think we're good. It feels pretty good. So what am I gonna do? I think I'm gonna put this here. I'm gonna... It is going. See, I'm pretty close. Let's see. I want to watch this area here. Looks good. something pop then and I can see a little crack there so I'm going to back out I think and I'm looking in the end here it really doesn't look too bad Actually, when I looked inside, then I could see that it was just a little bit tight. You have to do this with every one of your tenons. Just check it, check it, check it. I think this is where my problem was here. This seemed to be a little bit fat down right by the shoulder, which would make sense because I took some off with the surface, with the, the bench plane. this time. Maybe. Let's 
pretty good. I think we're there. So we don't have the split this time. Move that just so you can see. And ultimately, we'll be cutting this tenon off. So we're going to get them all to this level. Then we're going to put clamps on this, and then we're going to clamp it and see if the shoulders go up. And if we need to fettle it, we will.